Hello there, my mate Vince here, and in this video today we're going to attempt to fix up this Ring indoor camera here. So this was sent in by a viewer, a viewer called John, and he's put, hi Vince, encloses a Ring camera we discussed on Patreon. He's a member over on Patreon, thank you John. I've also included the original power adapter, but it uses standard micro USB connector and won't power at all from any adapter or power brick I've tried. When using a USB power meter in line, let me get my one ready. Ta da It appears to trip the power supply when I connect the camera, which leads me to think it could be an internal short of some kind. Yes, I love those ones. Good luck with getting it working, and many thanks for all the fantastic content over the years. You've inspired me to put my hand to so many projects I wouldn't have even considered having a go at beforehand. All the best, John. You know what, that is so good, and I hope I continue to inspire because I know to begin with, I just used to do videos with like a broken up multimeter and some old screwdrivers, and maybe I was more relatable to more people to give it a go. I hope that I'm still relatable because I tried doing so many different things that I've got zero knowledge of, like this, never taken it apart before. I've checked online, as far as I can see, there is no teardowns off this model here. There is of earlier models or bigger models, but not this one. 99.9% .9 of the population doesn't have a clue either. And if I can inspire them to have a go, that's great because it means more fixed things, gives you a massive buzz, which is the reason I do it, and it keeps things out of landfill as well. I can't really see that there's any negative off trying to fix things. What is the downside of fixing something? It's already broken. What are you gonna do with it? If that's broken, what's gonna happen? It's just gonna be thrown. So uh, by trying to fix it, it's, uh, you know, I can, I can only see the positives. Anyway, let's get straight into it. Okay, right, plug this into here. So we can see five volts. Let's see what happens when we plug this in. So it goes that way in. Oh, hold on. Can't get it in. There. Yes, it does go off. Look at that. Straight away, cuts it straight away. Well, that's interesting. Okay, now, part of the challenge is gonna be trying to get into this thing. So I think what I'm gonna do is Undo the screw at the bottom just to see if there's a chance that that unclips. I think that's just to wall mount it, so you can put that up here. Let's see what's happening. Now, I'm gonna say that I don't think this is repairable unless you were to get another one. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the parts needed to repair it, but you never know. It does look like there's a seam here. I wonder, can I pop that out? All right, if I was to play this in normal time, this took 15 minutes to get apart and I was prying, <laughs> prying hard for all those 15 minutes. There's no hidden screws or anything like that. When I do eventually get it apart, which you'll see in a few seconds, it makes more sense how it's put together. But remember, there's no tear down videos on this so other people can copy me, I can't copy anybody else. But this was not easy at all to take apart. I'd go as far as to say it was horrible to take apart. Which is the complete opposite of those lovely people over at the My Mate Vince Massive. I could do my own sound effects now. And the members this month are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky. Having fun repairs, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeebs.com, DJVG, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Wear, Daniel Watson, Zeke C, and Anthony Dean. There we go. Now, after all that, let's see what lies inside this camera. Wow, what a horrible, horrible, horrible thing to take off. So, how are you supposed to do that? So we have, at least you know now, look. Clip, 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 clip. Why were they so impossibly hard to take out? So they're clipping onto here, so you've got to kind of, ah, you've got to push them in. So it looks like you have to squeeze. I wonder was it glued on top of it? Probably wasn't glued. So you have to squeeze them in order to take that out. Yep. These are all broken now because of my, uh, my messing. Okay, right, now let's see. So that's a massive heat sink, isn't it? A big thermal pad. 
So, uh, yeah, we're gonna have big chips under there and we have the port down here. Let's just make sure with all that mess in it is still doing what it was doing. Yeah, it's off straight away. Okay, let's unplug these things. That's already unplugged. And we'll just do them one at a time just to see. That goes off. Let's unplug this one. That goes off. And let's unplug the bottom one. And off. So there's nothing to do with any of them. So we've got a screw here, screw here, a couple of screws here. Let's undo the screws and see what's happening. That's that little reset button just on, on here. Well, let's take off that little aerial thing here, antenna. Oh, that's going to be for uh, Wi-Fi, isn't it, or Bluetooth or something. Gotta be really careful because that is the camera sensor there. So let's do that back up because we don't want a load of dust in that, do we? You see, just here. Okay, so what are all these things here? Light sensors, maybe? Uh, LED lights to let it know, let us know it's on. Uh, would it have a microphone? I suppose it's got a microphone on it as well. This looks like maybe a little Wi-Fi board. Looks like a little aerial for Wi-Fi, doesn't it? Okay. Well, we're in, which is good. Most of the board's covered up, which is bad. Let's just see again if it's behaving any differently. Nope. So we've got a major short somewhere. Wouldn't it be great if it was just a capacitor? Tell you what, let's unplug the camera. If this is the camera. Now let's see. No, nope. still goes off. Right, let's zoom in around this uh, connector. Okay, so it's one of those boards that's kind of hard to see. But we can see little traces here, so now, with this one, I'm thinking, unless they use this for some sort of updates or something, it should be just power, shouldn't it? Positive and negative. So, does it go to here? And off to here, maybe? These little resistors or something? Oh, no, hold on a minute. Ah, uh, now look here. That was me. That was me in trying to get it apart, you see. So destructive. Right, okay. Uh, what are they going to be for there? Mwah. That's annoying. Well, you know, if it wasn't in... Well, no, if it's an inductor, it's going to be important. If they were capacitors, it probably wouldn't matter. But if it's an inductor, it's going to be passing a signal through... That's a shame. See, when I was getting the bit in there, I was slipping. You know, when I was getting this in there, I was slipping, and obviously I've knocked them. That's a real shame. Well, you know, it might be to do with, it says there, like, transmit and receive. It might be something to do with the Wi-Fi side of things. I, I, I'm saying now this isn't going to be fixable. But let's just see what the, uh, see if we can find out what the problem is. Because, remember, that's not going to be related to the problem because it was uh, it was already doing the problem before I got my mangy paws on it. There's no damage in the port whatsoever. So 
we have a full short on that capacitor if you listen here and here. So now, should we try to put a bit of voltage injection in and see what's getting hot? I mean, it could just be that capacitor, but yeah, that's not shorting. Hmm, wonder could it be just that? It looks fine though. Short as well. So is that diode. I think what we need to do is, let's take off. I'm wondering, is that the first, you know, are these the first components on it? If I was to take off this, and if the short was on this side, we know it's going into the board. If it was on this side, we know it's something to do with this, you know, could it have somehow failed internally? I think it's highly unlikely, unless it was underneath here. That all looks perfect. Let's zoom right in on that capacitor, see if we can see any cracks. Well, to me, it looks okay, doesn't it? But you know, looking at it closely now, this must be the main power rail going in. Look, would you say that this is the main power rail going in here? So it comes down from here, goes into here, maybe up to here, through here, into here. I think we'll take off this uh, capacitor and maybe this thing here as well. Well, let's add a little bit of flux. I think I'm going to take off the cap and that to start with. The zero ohm resistor. I've got to try to keep the heat away from the plastic here as well. And that's that one. And that one. Temperature there was 500 degrees Celsius, 120 airflow out of a possible 200. Okay, so now let's see what's happening. So here, I think it's gonna be going into the board. Yeah, so you can see the short's still there. Okay. Uh, but it's not here. So now, if that is the first point from the USB, we should now have five volts at this point here, but look, it's not going through the zero ohm resistor, which must be like some sort of fuse that then goes into the board. So yeah, I think this is probably gonna be like a chip failure, but uh, it's, still, it's still interesting to see the inside of it. So let's plug it in. This now shouldn't go dead, I'm thinking. No, there you go, yeah. So we've still got it. But obviously we've got no power going into the board. So if I was to go onto that little resistor now, that's not there. And let's take a ground, let's use the ground from, uh, well, let's just use this here. And if we go this side, we should have five volts. There we go, yeah. But now as it goes into the board, we've got a full short, you see, because, you can hear there. Yeah, so that's what's knocking it down, and it is a full short. If we just go to ohms, let's kill the power from it. And if we go to ohms, you will see, there we go, a one ohm short. And if we were to go to the other side of the capacitor, you will see the same the same reading, near enough, 1.3, 1.4. That's definitely a full short. Right, let's uh, have another closer look inside, just in case it could be the capacitor above it. But I think that pad's going, I think that's the pad. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do, yeah, let's zoom in and you'll hear it beep. Let's check the capacitor above it now, see if there's still a short on that cap up here. No, excellent. So, the short is in this pad here, this bit here. Because that's going to be ground anyway, isn't it? Yeah. So now, six holes. Let's have a look under here and see what's going on. What on earth is that there? That's a light, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be uh, an LED light that does numerous different colors because look at the amount of legs it's got on it. Right, okay. Let's try to get this off. Hmm. 
Wow. <laughs> There's so much to it, isn't there? So where are we coming through from here? I wonder how many layers this board has. Has it even come through to there? Let's zoom in and see what's going on down in this corner down here. So do any of those look dodgy? Mm, no. Well, I suppose this calls for voltage injection. We know five volts is going into it, don't we? So let's uh, pop five volts in. Well, no, we can just put a couple of volts in. See what uh, see what it's drawing. Well, actually, no. We better start with one volt because five volts is not going into it. It's getting cut straight away because of the short. So let's uh, put one volt in and see if we can see anything getting warm. I mean, we've got plenty of capacitors here. Let's just go across a few of them just to see if there's shorts on all of them or not. So there's going to be shorts down here. Ah, but not there. Or here. Or here. Okay, so the short area is down here. So it's just these two. So we have a short here. It's hard to tell because, no, it's not touching that. Yeah, we've got a short on that cap as well. I was going to say there's no damage on those caps, but there is only two caps there, isn't there? Three, that tiny one there as well. I'll tell you what, look, it'd probably be easier than doing voltage injection. Let's take off the three caps and let's see what it's, uh, what it's doing. Okay, so all three caps are off now. That one, that one, and that little one there. Let's see if we've still got the short. Yeah, we have. Right, okay, so the short's still there. I don't think we're going to be able to find it unless we put voltage injection in. So now, I think I'm going to have to take off all... Because there's going to be feeding the chips somewhere, I'm sure. I think we're going to have to take off here as well, these things. Where did that come off? Oh, that came off here, didn't it? That came off my little connector here, and here's the other one, here. Okay, well, we can just wire them straight up anyway. You know what I mean, we could put the wires straight onto here. Right, two massive chips with a thermal pad here. And would this be some sort of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth board? I bet it is, because it looks like a, something that's been added on. Right, so I'm going to solder a wire onto this bottom pad here, because you can see you know, the power rail is the one with the six fires here, this big lump here. Let's put it on here, and then we'll see what's getting warm. There we go. Okay, so what we'll do is get my bench power supply on. I'm just going to put it to one volt. Right, and it's 500 milliamps, so 0.5 of an amp. The reason I'm only doing one volt is because I don't know what it's shorted to. And if it was like shorted into some chip, then by putting in two or three volts, it might, uh, it might fry it. So let's get a nice ground. I'm just going to go straight onto here for the ground like so and here let's see what you're drawing right you're drawing at 0.13 volts at 0.5 amps so it's gone straight into constant current i'm not sure whether that's going to actually show anything up but i'll leave it a while and we'll see if anything's getting hot I think the voltage is too low to really show anything up. 
I'm going to have to, well, see, well let's increase that, let's cre increase the amps. Right, so I'm now, I'm going to go up to 2 amps. And we are now at 0.47 of a volt, so half a volt. I'm still in constant current now. So the reason I'm doing this is because when we put in a normal power supply into it, whether that be the official one or the battery power bank, it kind of goes into a safety mode and shuts those devices off. But with the bench power supply, it doesn't care. It will just keep pumping out the voltage and the current. Now, you might wonder what I mean by constant current or constant voltage. So let's say now if you had something set to maybe 5 volts and 10 amps then if the device is only going to draw maybe like two amps or something you might find it will go straight to constant voltage mode which means it's gone to the max voltage it can do not current in this instance in the video what you're seeing now it goes straight to the constant current because to begin with i had it at whatever it was half an amp and now i've gone up to two amps and so it keeps going into constant current meaning it's taking all the current that i've allowed the power supply to output and that's the reason why even though I've put it at one volt it's not pushing out one volt because it's jumped into constant current mode first maybe if I put the constant current mode all the way up to 10 amps then maybe it would then go to constant voltage at one volt I hope that makes sense it kind of makes sense in my head it's just hard to explain oh something's getting warm something's getting warm over here excellent right let's zoom in get the IPA on it oh yes might not be a chip, might be fixable. Now we've got three capacitors there. Does the middle one look darker than the other two? Come on. Oh, it's this here. It's this here, isn't it? This thing, 16AF, and that must be a voltage regulator. Is it definitely that? Let's flood. Yeah, because it's still wet all around it. Yeah, it has to be that. Well, there you go. I didn't need a fuller cam, did we? Because you can see it's there. So now that must be shorted internally and putting it down to ground. So let's pop that off and let's see what it's going to, let's see what it's going to do. So I'm going to turn off my bench power supply. How good is that? Oh, we've got the same ones over here. 16 AF, 16 AF. Well, let's pop it off and see. I'll tell you what we could do before we do that. Let's see if we can get a reading, see if it's different than these ones over here. So we've got three legs on this side and two this side. So no short there, no no, no, yes, yes, ye right, so those two are shorted to that one. Is that the same over here? Hmm, they're also shorted. Oh, but that one, I don't think that is though, between there and there, so maybe we've got two faults. No, beg your pardon. Right, so it's not shorted between the this leg here and that leg there. Listen, but it is between the middle. And on this one, it is shorted here. There we go. Excellent. Right, let's pop it off. Thank you, John. I'm enjoying this. Nightmare to get into, but uh, yeah, nice, uh, you know, nice bit of fault finding. Okay, so now let's see if the pads are shorting. No, they're not. Excellent. Right, now let's see if the short's gone from over here. Yes, it has. Listen, it's gone. It has gone. Fantastic. So, that means the short should have gone from here. Yay, it has gone. So now let's go over to our little tiny, 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 tiny little, what I would presume is a voltage regulator. Oh, 
And have we got a short between here and here? We have, and I don't think we should have. It should be between there and there, not there and there. So I'm gonna give this a little clean, uh, get the markings off it. I'm gonna look it up, see what it is, and uh, see if one of them can be purchased. Do you know what? I think they probably can. So that's good. Let me just quickly put the capacitors back on, and then we're kind of back to where we were at the beginning. I'll put the resistor on as well. Okay, so I've got the resistor and the capacitor on this side here, and on the other side I got the two bigger capacitors on, but that tiny little capacitor went walkie somewhere and I don't know where it went to. But I'm not bothered about that. What's more important is there was a resistor underneath that completely came off the pad and was sort of shortened between the pad and the ground here, but that was with me messing with it. So it's important for me to put the resistor back in place because it's going to be pushing a signal through to somewhere else but when it comes to the capacitor it's just going to be cleaning the signal or blocking some frequencies off a signal so even with it off it should still be fine obviously if i knew where it was i would try to put it back on it was just incredibly hard to get it underneath there and it uh, it, uh, it started to blow somewhere and then i took it off and then it just pinged i'll never find that it's absolutely tiny right okay let's now see what happens when we plug this in it's still a bit warm Let's see if it uh, see if it does anything different. So we've got it there. Now remember, obviously the voltage regulator is not on it now, so there's going to be a third of it or half of it that's not working. Excellent. But you can see there that it doesn't cut out anymore. But let me do a little bit of research into what that little chip is. Well, eventually I found it. It looks like it's a TLV62569, 2.5 volts to 5.5 volts input, two amp high efficiency step down buck converter. So uh, yeah, there's a there's a write up here about it, and you can buy them, but it's from places like AliExpress. There is one UK eBay selling it. But, and also I can't seem to find them in the normal places like RS and CPC. But if you go to eBay here, I can find them here. But what they're doing is, unless I'm gonna get them all the way from China again. What, is that even the same one? Six, two, five, so yeah, it looks like it is. What they're doing here is they're actually including them on a little board. So it's kind of like a, a breakout board, 3.3 volt output, 1.2 amp max. So that is the chip on the board, but you're paying seven pound for it. Now, if it was just a case of getting one, then I would do that. But unfortunately, I have got more. More's happened since that last bit of filming. So I'm just gonna talk you through it now. I'm not gonna show it to you all because basically, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's a failure video. I've now got another one of these things which is heating up. So I did get a little bit of life in the camera by swapping them around. Let me go over back to the blue mat and I'll, uh, I'll explain it in more detail. Right, so maybe if at the very beginning I had just bought that one from eBay and taken it off the board, I might have got it working. But my thinking, I think was logical behind it. I think that these bottom chips here are for like the power supplies going up into it. But what I was thinking is, if I was to take one of the other chips off from higher up, maybe then, well what I did to begin with is I kept swapping them around. So you know we definitely had 141 here because it was shorted. I swapped them round to the other ones here, but it still was dead. But when I took the one off from here, because there's another two AF chips going up here, when I took the one off here and brought it down to the 40 position, I managed to get a light on and I managed to connect it to my phone. So I'll just show you a tiny bit of footage where it's speaking to me to show that it did come alive. But basically, this one here must be for the camera. Let me zoom in. So in all the different locations, you can see, that we have a, a chip here, an AF chip. We've got an AF chip here, uh, AF chip here, you know, the 16 AF. And we have one here, and we have one here. Now, from memory, this is the one to do with the speaker. So when you remove this one, it doesn't speak to you. This one is the one to do with the camera. So when you remove this one, it doesn't see you. 
and these three down here must be to give it power you know for the chips and stuff like that so i did manage to get the blue light on i managed to connect it to my phone and i managed to get it speaking to me which i'll show you little clips of now your ring device is in setup mode cheer that and now look that's doing that and if i hold down this i think that starts to flash so holding it down now, there you go, look. Did you see that it started to flash fast? Look. I think you've got to hold it down for 15 seconds or something. So maybe that's reset now, but I didn't hold that down for 15 seconds. But you can see it's definitely doing more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try to set it up on the actual, uh, on my phone and see whether or not I can communicate with it or not. Well, unbelievably, it seems to have connected, connected to my Wi-Fi, recognized itself, it's been speaking to me, and now it's updating itself. So I'm not quite sure what I, the voltage regulator that I've removed, I'm not sure what it's for. I think it is actually going to be for the camera. So I think it won't actually be able to take any images, but it's definitely connected to Wi-Fi and stuff like that. I'll let it go through with the update and see what doesn't work at the end. Okay, so it set itself up, but look, it says camera preview not available. So uh, there's nothing happening here. But it has... Uh, I wonder would it record audio then? See, I don't actually know how it records event history. All activity. All events that your Ring device captures are listed here. So I don't understand how it works. But you would think that if the camera wasn't working, it was still the IR sensor would still, you know, kick off or whatever to detect mo movement. So maybe it would like to record audio. But it doesn't seem to be doing that. So, I mean, that's good. We've definitely proved 100% the only thing originally wrong with this was this one here. But now with my messing, obviously I could never get a picture because I need this one here. But with my messing now, what's happening is it's acting differently. I never have the blue light come up now. And it looks like this one, or is it this one? I can't remember, one of these has failed. So now watch this, I'm gonna plug it in and you're gonna see that uh, it will draw quite a lot of current and it'll be fluctuating a lot. But after a minute or so, this one down here will start to get really, really warm. So now I need to buy two of them. And what I'm, there you go, this one here, can you see? That one now is getting warm. So this one here has now blown. So am I willing to spend £14 on the eBay ones? No, I don't think so. Because I think once I replace this one and this one, I'm not so sure if it's still going to work. Because remember, it went faulty in the first place. And I'm not just sure whether the component went faulty or whether something caused it to go faulty. I'm sure it is just a component. But now look, this one has now gone here. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do is... Let's just, uh, out of curiosity, let's swap now, because you can see that this one isn't heating up. Let's swap over this one here with this one here, and let's see if the fault follows the pad, or whether the pads, or whether the fault follows the item itself. I'm just gonna quickly swap them over. In fact, what I'll do is let me take the speaker one from up off here, and uh, pop it down here. Right, the reason I've opted to take the speaker voltage regulator off rather than the other one that I said I was about to is because even if I have the speaker one removed and the camera one removed, I'm thinking we should still get a blue light like we did yesterday. Right now I can't get a blue light on it whatsoever, so it's acting differently again than it was yesterday. So uh, yeah, that's the reason why I'm going for that, to see if we can get that blue light again. And then if we can, it might be worth me buying two of them. If we can't, there's no point, because it means I've probably blown one of the main chips or something else. Right, okay, let's see if we've got a short between those two. No, we haven't. Right, have we got a short on the board between them two? No, we haven't. Okay, tell you what, let's leave that off for a minute. Let's see now if it uh, comes to life, and then we can pop that one back on. And let's see if... Uh, if it's behaving any differently. So with my messing, maybe with my heating up, I think I I might have partially blown one or blown something else. You can see here that I fixed up the connector back here by just soldering on those two long pins that were sticking out and then the white plastic just sits on top of that. Well, let's see now if it's uh, doing anything different. Uh, 
that's better, it's drawing a lower amount. Often I had to hit the reset button at the top here to get it to do anything. Let me leave it a few minutes and see if the blue light comes back on. Right, unfortunately my phone is not picking that up, it says this device is offline and I still have no blue light on here. So, it's definitely behaving differently than it was before, even though right now it's not drawing the, uh, you know, the faulty current. Let's pop this one back on, just to see, maybe this one up here that has more than just the speaker. Okay, so it's cooled down sufficiently now. Let's plug it in and see what it's drawing. Right, we're back up, look at that. We're back up, one amp. Oh yeah, that, oh yes, that's very warm. Yeah, okay, right, watch this with the isopropyl. So we've just changed out this one. There you go, can you see, straight off. So 100% now, we need two of them. And I think even then, I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not. I think I'm gonna leave this one as a failure. And let me tell you the reasons why. I feel happy that we proved the fault on two. Definitely the short was onto there. So it was nice to use a bit of voltage injection to find where the fault's going. So I enjoyed the fault finding. It was very destructive getting into the camera. And the very fact that I've kind of made it worse, meaning that to begin with, I definitely had, when I swapped it from down here to here, I definitely had the blue light and it connected to my phone. Well, right now it's not even gonna, you know, there's no blue light, it's not even worth me doing my phone because look, even if I hold this button down up here, the reset button, there's no blue light coming on or any light of any description. So in my messing, I have made it worse. Now I have been going across the probes with my uh, multimeter while it's been live. Maybe I've shorted something to make it worse. So uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it, leave it as it is. It is an item that can be repaired, but it's not easy. Getting into it is pretty destructive. As well as that, remember, I've knocked off quite a few of the capacitors or poss possibly inductors down here. I think I'm just fighting a losing battle on this one because it was so hard to get into. But now that I've done one, it would be a lot easier for me and also other people to get into the inside. And maybe if you have a dead short like this one here, maybe it would be worth looking at the voltage regulators. I think it was, uh, it was definitely interesting, the fault finding, and it was nice when I did hear the speaker come to life. But... I don't think it's worth chasing it any further because I think even if I spend £14 and get two of them, one for here and one for here, I still don't believe it's going to come to life because when we took this one off, it didn't come to life. And beforehand it would have done, it just wouldn't have had the camera or the speaker, we would have still had the light here. So obviously in all my testing and messing, I have made it worse unfortunately. But that's what happens often when you're trying to muddle your way through things uh, I've uh, obviously broken it further, which is a real shame. So uh, yeah, apologies John that I couldn't get it fixed. I hope you still enjoyed the video. If uh, you all enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. And who knows in the future there might be another Ring camera. I might have a little look on eBay, see if I can pick up another one because now I've got a feeling I'd have a lot better chance in fixing it second time round. And I've got this one for spares, so that's it. Thanks for watching.